Look what the Lord has done. It's true, the Bible says that the gates of hell cannot prevail. And I was looking at it and I saw packed, I just saw, I like, oh Jesus, I love you. Thank you. But you have to understand the valley is temporary. It's never, never permanent unless you decide so. And in the season of Nehemia that we are in, we are in a season where people have to pray, have to get into your inner room, you have to go to the secret place because you can never take any other person where you've never been. The reason why Christians don't pray is because prayer takes sacrifice. You have to kill your flesh. You have to kill comfort. You have to kill that pillow. You have to kill off Netflix. You have to kill off all the things because your desire for God has to be greater than your desire to be comfortable. <laughs> Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And that's why I, I say to you that this is a season of prayer. But as we are moving with the Lord, there's two spirits that you have to watch out for in the season. The spirit of Sanballat and the spirit of Tobias. The spirit of Sanballat and the spirit of Tobias. The spirit of Sanballat was a speaking spirit. It just spoke the threats. It did nothing but speak. That is the same spirit that operated in Goliath. A speaking spirit. It talks and talks and talks and talks. Two years ago, the whole world was under the spirit of Sanballat. Threats, accusations, fear. Fear is, the spirit of fear is so deadly that it takes three spiritual forces from God to break it. Sound mind, power, and love. Breaks of fear. Quickly throw up Philippians 1.28. I want to show you something. It says this, And are not any way terrified by your adversities, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. Let me read that again. And not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. What does the scripture mean? It means this, that every time there's reason to fear, and you don't show fear, the enemy gets afraid. Because in the spiritual realm, what happens, the devil starts to ask, but they should be afraid. Why are they not afraid? Should we be afraid because they're not afraid? It's literally what it means. It means that in the, in the demon rang, because you have to understand in the satanic kingdom, that that kingdom is set up with fear. Fear is the commerce. Intimidation is the means of control. Lying is the means of power. And so every time you have a reason to fear and you do not show fear, the demons start to ask one another, why are they not afraid? Should we be afraid? Is the judgment coming? What's busy happening? These people are not afraid. We put cancer there, they cast it off. We put sickness there, they cast it off. We put poverty there, they cast it off. We put divorce there, they cast it off. Who are these people that are filled with power? You see, I have to... <laughs> You have to have a revelation that you are a son and a daughter of God. If you have a revelation that you are the son, that's why Jesus asked Peter, who do you say I am? I'm not interested in what others say. Who do you say? He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He, Jesus responds immediately. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, Peter, but my father which art in heaven. And then Jesus makes a power statement. He says, and I tell you the truth, hell will not prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. What is he saying? He's saying on this revelation that I am the Christ. There's no devil that can stand against that revelation. Once you have a revelation that he is who he says he is, you will not bargain nor try to fight against. You will stand on your rights and say, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Sickness has no part of me. Death has no part of me. Uh, there's certain things that you cannot negotiate. 